Hey everyone, it is Shannon. I am here today to talk about Sun by Lois Lowry, and this is the fourth and final book in the Giver Quartet. Uh, this is going to be part of my series talk videos, but it is also technically a sci-fi fantasy and weird selection in terms of the series as a whole. I'm counting completing the series as sort of like bonus points for that um, project. Um, so it's my 28th title completed for the sci-fi fantasy and weird exploration, but because I am talking about each of the individual titles and doing them as series talk, which are spoiler-free, no, spoilery discussion videos, um, this won't be a sci-fi fantasy and weird video, it'll be a series talk video. So this isn't going to be an in-depth discussion about Sun by Lois Lowry, the fourth and final book in the Giver Quartet. Um, I'll leave a link up above to series talk or you can hear me talk a little bit more about why I decided to do the videos and those kinds of things um, but we're going to go in depth and because this is the final book I'll probably talk about some final thoughts about the series as a whole. Um, so yeah so this is the fourth book in the Giver Quartet and it was published in 2000 and. 12. So that's actually quite recently. I did not realize how recently that was. That might have been around the first time I read The Giver. Um, the Giver is from the 90s, 93 if memory serves. So that's almost 20 years between the two, uh, the first and the last. I don't think the initially that all of the sequels were later. Um, the Giver kind of does work as a standalone and then the other books are kind of like companion novels furthering the story but you can't just read The Giver. Um, the genre I would continue to say that this is definitely another uh, dystopic um, and um, the series is complete at these four titles. Um, it only took me four days to read this. I did the whole series as an intensive in September 2019. Um, I read each of them within less than a week and gave myself a couple of days to form some thoughts about it and then got right back into the next one. They are YA titles, so they aren't as um, time intensive in terms of reading. Um, they're, and most of them are around 200 pages, although Sun was more, it was in the 300 page land, so it took me a little bit Bit longer but I actually read a lot of it in one day which I don't normally do but um but uh I was determined you know when you get to the end of something I am like that I am like you know once I see the the finish line I'm like <laughs> everything else gets pushed aside and that definitely happened here um and so I ended up giving this one a 7 out of 10 um or a 4 out of 5 I put a 4 out of 5 on Goodreads but I mostly did that to indicate my rankings of the four books within the series, um, because one, I give one a five, one a four, one a three, one a two. No, no ones. Ones for me usually on Goodreads or DNFs, but, um, which is a whole other conversation. So I ended up giving it a four, but it's more like a three and a half, but I did want to indicate that I, it was my, actually, I'm surprised to say this, it was my second most favorite Maybe I'll do the whole ranking at the end. Let's do that. Hopefully I'll remember to do that. So we're going to be talking about Sun. Fortunately, this, the cover is so light, it kind of whites out, but we're going to stick with it for a bit. I do have an alternate one, but we're going to stick with it for a bit. So this one, I had no idea what to expect from, expect from this one. Any of the books, I didn't know what to expect other than The Giver, because that was a reread for me. Um, and so each of the other titles has been an unexpected character uh, situation, and this was as well. This one has actually told in a couple of different times. One that we already experienced in the past and one that we that one that brings the whole series to a close so I mentioned this is spoilers so this is a spoilery discussion so either if you don't care about it the spoilers it's great otherwise this is a good one to watch after you read the book so this one, I actually did not pick up on who, we follow the character of Claire in this one, and I did not pick up on who she was um, until a fair bit into the story. She is part of the original community, they call it the community, where we started with Jonas in the first book, uh, so we're centered back in that utopic dystopic, um, where everything is a-okay and people go about their day and there are rules and regulations and everyone's hunky-dory and people don't generally don't have emotions, they don't see color, they just do their thing and then that's how things are done. Everything is strategized, everything is laid out from them, they don't have many choices, they just do the thing. Claire is a, uh, a girl who is uh, given the occupation of being a birth mother. Um, so she is 13 at the time um, and I believe she has uh, a baby when she's 14. And I wondered if we were, it was going to talk about sort of uh, young pregnancy, but it didn't super go that route. Um, but I could not, it did not pick up 
I did not pick up on the connection between the fact that she was a birth mother and, well, it was called son, so that's some, you know, you're, you're getting some blur with that. But um, the pregnancy actually does not go well, uh, which is very unexpected. She experiences pain. People don't normally experience pain. Everyone finds this confusing. It gets very hush-hush. Um, she finds that she is very, wants to see the baby. They don't want her to see that they wear masks during the birth. Like, holy crap. Um, like, and so... And, and so it's very unusual. Everyone else just, you know, they, they live very calmly and they eat lots of good food and then they have their babies and then they recover and then they have another baby. That's generally the, the role of a birth mother. That's not what happens to her. And she also feels very connected and wants to see the son, her son. Um, so, but she, it gets very hushed hush. She gets shown off to the fish hatchery. No, no, go do that job over there. Um, and one of the things that's interesting is that there's a, a because she had the, the, the went straight from being like a kid to being a birth mother, she never actually, this is what, this, this could be a red herring. She never ended up having to take the emotion pills, like the ones that calm your emotions. So she never did that. So that's part of, I guess, why she feels, um, or it is why she feels, but that was a missed step. And so that sort of explains, you know, to, to the reader why she feels something. But as it turns out, her son ends up being Gabe. And that is where the heartbreak starts to begin in the story. Because Gabe is the baby from the first book, from The Giver, that Jonas's dad notices that he's not doing so well. And they decide to take him in for a year and try and increase his growth and increase his, like, the, do hit the landmarks that they need in their community to be okay. Um, and, of course, in the... In, that book in the giver book he is um he doesn't like through after that first year gabe is not doing great and so the community is going to i can't i think they use the term release so they but he ends up um it ends up being that jonas escapes with gabe and um and gabe survives and so gabe is the son so we get to so this is a, a treading over some familiar ground but i didn't pick up on like you know she she talks to one of the the kid caregivers and that's actually jonas's dad so it was very clever from that perspective but this is also a really challenging book because claire is so sad and lost and like she wants her son so badly and she's so she doesn't end up going back on the emotion pills and so she doesn't super like other people just sort of like go about their day and everything is normal and it is all good and nobody questions anything and but she's like I don't know about this and so she ends up I think she wa I can't remember if she does think about trying to she does think about trying to steal Gabe but there is like a like an anklet or something that they, he, she can't get off. But she ends up leaving the community and um, on a fishing boat and then ends up being washed ashore to another community. And this is where things started, to, for me, started to get a little bit weird. I actually quite enjoyed some of the time at that community. She befriends um, a man who... Uh, tried to leave it's a it's an it's like on a beach but there's like a huge cliff that no one ever thinks about trying to go over one guy did try he got injured and um so and so he came back and he now is injured he has he can't walk i can't remember what happens if he has a limb kira does too so it's something like that but claire befriends him and um learns to like wants to leave and it takes a very long time for her to work up the strength and agility to do this. I admired her perseverance so very much, like so very much. But they spend a lot of time on the training for that. And I kept on thinking of the song, The Climb, that they often use as a song in the voice. Um, and I really felt like you could feel that determination in her. And um but it's also, I found, one of the things I found challenging even about that community and the other books as well is that with the exception, I didn't mean to go into the things, that, the challenging things, but one of the things I found challenging about that community, it was very much back into sort of like old fashioned gender dynamics. The women do this, the women take care of the kids, they get married, then their mothers. And the only time we saw a, an equality situation was in the original dystopic community that was very, like, you nobody got to make any choices. And I'm like, 
so like this like sort of fishing or, or uh, uh, not island but shore community that was the case where Kira grows up that is the case all of the women are child like you know it's about getting married and having kids and then tending to the kids and then all of the men's have occupations and that was the same thing in terms of where Jonas and Kira and actually Gabe all end up that community as well like the, the the girls tend to be interested in talking they even very directly in this one Gabe talks about the things that girls talk about and the th thing that boys talk about and that really bothered me because I felt even like the giver is talking about a very like controlled environment like in, in the community but like at least there was like equality in terms of anyone could do anything um and so I don't know like I know <laughs> like it, it just irks me because it was one of the things I enjoyed about it and I felt like everywhere else it was like women or girls you know even the girls at that shore community they would pretend to be pregnant or pretend to child mind and you know when she washed ashore men were interested in her because she was someone new that was a potential like wife and it's like you don't even no idea who she was so and then her story is also driven by being a mother which is a very traditional female story which is there's nothing wrong with that i just feel like there i just i don't know i wanted i wanted that sort of level of equality and it's not it's not and this is called son so it's obviously about a mother-son relationship and also there was so much pain in this one in terms of um the like Gabe's character I was actually really shocked so we start just I think Gabe's sort of like an early teen in this one um and he's not the nicest person and I'm like oh my gosh like he's he's he was a fidgety kid. We knew that from the first one. But it's kind of funny that this whole series so centers on or started with, like, his survival. And then he's, like, you know, he's not, like, the nicest person. And, like, that's it's actually kind of cool in a weird way. It wasn't what I was expecting. But he's just, like, you know, he's just a person, you know? Like, he has good traits and bad traits. But he's just a person. And they're actually, that is very, that's really nice that there's sort of an egalitarianism, like, like a... Uh, like everyone matters you know like in in that sense that he doesn't need to be super special or have something in particular i can't remember he does have an ability most people do jonas uh kira um the messenger the character in messenger and i think gabe does i can't remember what it is um but they all do have an ability, um, but and but Claire doesn't. So Claire is all grit. She is all grit, <laughs> and I really like that about her. So yeah, so it was, it was tough. Like it was I and it, I really thought it was going into the land of Greek tragedy at some point. I was like, if Kira does not end, uh, not Kira, sorry, if Claire does not end up finding her son, or like doesn't he doesn't find out who she is, even though they now know each other. <sighs> Wow. Wow. So, okay. I want to like, so I did end up enjoying it. Um, and I did definitely understand it. It was different than I expected, but there are a couple of things that I want to talk about because I've talked about them in hints in some of my vlogs and some of the other videos that I've done. Cause I was always concerned about, especially in messenger, if there was a particular kind of allegory and particularly religious allegory coming through some of the, the, the story here, because there's one character called the trade master and he's featured in uh, Messenger as someone who will take something from you and give something to you. And there is a sort of like magic or some kind of element. Like it's not like $20 and here's a hat. It's like, give me some of your life force and I will make you younger. Give me some of the this and I will get you that girl that you want, you know, or, or money or a better position or whatever. And so I kept on wondering, is this character, this trade master, is he supposed to be um, like the devil or a demon or something like that. It's like, how does he have the power to do the things that he does? Like, I guess we do have people with abilities. Gabe, uh, Jonas, Kira can do things. Kira can see the future through embroidery. <laughs> it's one of the most interesting and very different abilities. Jonas can sort of see beyond. He can see color. He can see the world more vividly. And also he can see sort of like at another place. Um, and um, the character from Messenger had the ability to heal. So it's possible that it's just another person in this world with an ability. But I always feel like this world isn't Earth. But this one had another thing that made it Earth. I think they talked about Selkie 
communities um, at the island or the shore community, they talked about Selkies. So I'm like, oh, okay, that's like, you know, it's urban, it's, well, it's urban fantasy, fairy tale, it depends on your belief system. But they also talked about Macbeth in one of the earlier books. So we are supposed to be on Earth, I don't know when, um, like, I don't know if there was supposedly like some kind of catastrophic event, and because there's not much technology, generally, there is, there is technology in the community of the Giver book, but not in like where Jonas is so yeah so anyway the trade master that's the big character that I kept on going like is he supposed to be are we supposed to be like is he supposed to be the devil someone who will take something from you take a promise from you give you what you want but it sours you as a person it, it creeps into you and I didn't feel like there was um this book the last book really gave a good resolve on whether or not that's the case so I guess in some ways that, that's a good thing because that means that isn't directly what it's saying it could be if that's the one way to interpret interpret it but it's not directly necessarily what it's saying I'm going to switch to this to, like look at this gorgeous four bind up um but just because it makes the color a little nicer um anyway so yeah but there is a final standoff between Gabe and the trade master and I wasn't quite sure where it was gonna go um but I did enjoy the resolve like because it sort of pits them against each other and um and Gabe has the like the taskmaster basically says you kind of to win you have to kill me i think that's what he says and it's basically to win you have to go against what you believe like you have to do something against what you believe but gabe decides not to do it but he still ends up like for lack of a better term winning in the end like he still ends up having uh he does not play the game but still ends up winning, which is a resolve that I like. You don't always know if it's going to be able to work out that way, uh, but it does. And um, and so I was surprised, and it, but it was a little. I will say the the, the I did find the climax a little anticlimactic because I felt like. I I don't know what it was about it. Like me, and maybe it's because the big climax of the story is not actually between. Gabe and the trade master. I might have called him Taskmaster. The trade master. Like, that is, like, sort of, like, the big story part. Like, the big plot part. But the big emotional resolve is that he finally gets to meet his mother. And she finally gets to meet her son. It's gonna get me emotional! Because <laughs> it is! It is! Like, that's just as important in the story as it is between, um, like, him standing up for not doing what the other person said. That being said, I felt like we didn't know Gabe as well enough as a character to just sort of understand what he may or may not do in that situation. And it was a crap ton of pressure on him that he was the one <laughs> that had to go face off with the trade master. So yeah, so that was, I found that a bit light in terms of sort of like understanding the threads, but the, I think the characters and the, the, the determination are a bit more important in as opposed to the plot. One of the only criti big criticisms I will have of it is the 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 climb, the scene of the climb of Claire going up the 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 huge cliff went on forever. Like it was very very descriptive, and this is the longest book um, in the series, but it was very descriptive, and I don't feel like it had to be. But I really loved her her relationship. Was it with Enar? I think that was his name. Um, I really liked how how you know I really enjoyed it. Um, and how in that sense like a woman deciding I'm going to do this big physical feat I felt like there was something I was really really happy that that was that there was representation of that and um and she did it and she did it so anyway so overall I did enjoy this series but I definitely the giver I love so so very much it is without question one of my all-time favorite books and the other books were interesting and different dynamics and stuff like that but I kept on feeling like I was questioning a lot the giver I just loved it I loved every minute of it I know it showing like you know it's a it's a I thought it had the power full message of love <laughs> in it and I don't feel like and this one Sun did too but I didn't feel in Messenger and in Gathering Blue there was so much heartbreak and hardship that I didn't feel that message was what like was as strong in those ones um not that it isn't important it just wasn't there and people didn't know about it so maybe it's about the absence of of giving or receiving or being able to be at a place of love and the other ones were so i don't know so yeah so definitely the giver was my favorite and then son 
and then Messenger, and then Gathering Blue. So the energy of the series was a bit challenging because the second one was the one I didn't enjoy the most. Like, it was the one that I enjoyed the least. So it was a bit of an uphill battle from there. And it was. It was the favorite, and then down, and then back up. So that's how it ended up working out. So there you go. There are my long, rambly thoughts on both the Sun as well as the entire Giver series. I am glad that I read it, although it is a little heartbreaking that... The first book is still my favorite, and the other ones were interesting, but they didn't grab my heart as much as that first one did. So, but I am glad that I had read it. I feel very accomplished that I ended up reading an entire series in one month. That was really challenging, even though it's a younger title and they're only they're like, you know, between 150 and 300 pages each. They were it was also very emotional and challenging. Um, and I'll I'll link to my vlogs because I talk about them also throughout all of my September vlogs from 2019. If you're curious about hearing even more <laughs> about it but I did it I made it to the end and so I hope you enjoyed this video I'd love to hear your thoughts on Sun or what you felt like the series or the different books were representing or what the characters represented if there was messages that you received from it that you liked or that you didn't like I would love to hear that because that's where a lot of my thoughts about the series uh, were centered around as well as just of course loving the giver so thank you so much for watching we made it <laughs> See you in 